U.S. government has authorized the killing of U.S.-born Islamic cleric Anwar al-Awlaki for suspected involvement in inspiring terror plots in the United States. While Awlaki is currently hiding in Yemen, he used to live in San Diego and preach at a local mosque. KPBS reporter Amitha Sharma joins us to discuss her investigation into the Islamic cleric's ties to San Diego. But before we get to the uh, San Diego connection, tell us a little more about him and, and the terror plots that he's suspected of being involved in. Well, Alaki is an American-born Islamic cleric who is encouraging Muslims worldwide to commit violent jihad on Americans. He is believed to be the inspiration for Major Nidal Hassan, who was accused of shooting and killing 13 people at Fort Hood last fall. He's also also to be believed to have inspired um, Umar Abdul Muttalib, the, the failed Christmas Day bomber, as well as Faisal Shahzad, who was the would-be Times Square bomber. As you said in your opening, the U.S. government believes he is trying to wage war against the United States. and. It has authorized the CIA to kill him, and it is the first time the U.S. government has ever sanctioned the killing of an American citizen. It is the first time. It is the first All time. Right. Tell us about the San Diego connection. When did he live here and, and preach here? He moved to San Diego in 1996, and he was the imam at the Rabat Mosque in La Mesa, which is just a couple of miles east of here, and he left sometime in 2000. And imam means he was, what, the head of the, preacher. the mosque? He was, he the, was preacher. the preacher. Okay. So why was he here? What did he come here to do? Well, it's interesting. Nobody is quite sure, but one thing uh, investigators know is that while he was here in 2000, he met regularly after Friday prayers with two of the September 11th hijackers, mm -hmm. uh, Khalid al-Midhar and Nawaf al-Hazmi, in a guest room um, on the second floor of the Rabat Mosque. And it is the belief of Ray Fournier, who's a former diplomatic security services agent from the State Department, that he was actively providing spiritual support, keeping these hijackers on track with their mission. It is also the belief of some FBI agents that a lackey provided material support to the September 11th hijackers. The day that a Saudi man living in San Diego found these two hijackers an apartment to live in, there were four calls noted by intelligence officials between a lackey and this Saudi man. But, e but even before that, he um, an investigation had opened had been opened by the FBI because it was reported that he had been approached by an agent for Osama bin Laden, and it was during that investigation that they discovered that Olaki had ties, had contacts with people with the Holy Land Foundation, which raises money for. Hamas. Was there ever any attempt to arrest him? There was an attempt to arrest mm -hmm. him. Um, Ray Fournier, the problem is, is they believe that there was material support provided by Olaki to these hijackers, but they didn't have enough evidence to build a criminal case. So Ray Fournier devised another route, and that was to um, prosecute him for passport fraud. Before he entered the United States in 1990, he said that he was a Yemeni citizen. That's not true. He was born in the United States. Just very briefly, Amitha, where is he now? He he is in hiding in Yemen. Okay, well, thank you very much, Amitha Sharma. Thank you.